Good morning, everyone. Welcome. This is uh, Janine Bolin. Welcome to the Open Friday Coffee. Thank you so much for joining us, James. Always nice to have the web geeks in the house. Mark, thank you for being there so that Jeff is not the only person from the Great White North that is with us this morning. <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining us. We have a three-day weekend coming up for some of us here in North America with uh, Martin Luther King here today. And so this time we wanted to kick it off with a little light chat. And for, we're going to start off with our one-minute tech tip since I saw that Matt Roseman is in the house. Good morning, Matt. Do you want to chat with us about what we're doing in the great world of tech today? Oh, my God, yes. And by the way, let me throw it out there. Redirects are not always great, depending if it's traffic or, more importantly, if you've got malware or spyware on your machine. So <laughs> just to throw it out there to you guys. So it's, it's definitely a yin, yin and yang in that in that aspect. Um, there is so much to go over. My God. Um, uh, for, those of you, for those of you who have been living under a rock, I'm not talking about Dwayne Johnson either, you know, um, is that the consumer – some of you got that reference. I appreciate that. So the consumer <laughs> – uh, it's been a long day already. Uh, the Consumer Electronics Show was this week. And all I can say is, holy shit, I have never seen so many different new devices, gadget goodies. The amount of tech at, at CES this, this year was incredible. The one big takeaway that I'll give to everybody here is that AI is definitely here. It's here on a hardware level and on a software level. Also, you're going to have devices that are connected through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And let me go through some of the highlights. I spent over two hours watching videos, and I'm still going here. So I'm going to give you some of the highlights of what's coming out and what can you expect and what will actually impact your world. So uh, the big thing that I saw this uh, year is AI in everything. When it comes to TVs, refrigerators, washers, dryers, um, robots, um, all those things are coming at this point. LG came out with a transparent TV. You could see through the TV now, an OLED TV. It's also a peg in case you want to do a, a black background. Um, Samsung's coming out with a 3D monitor without glasses um, and also a glare-free TV. Wireless projectors are coming out now as well. You have wireless TVs where you have a box and you have it plugged in and you have two cables and that's it. That's pretty amazing. Also, biotech is also big this year. I saw devices that will check your oxygen level, your BPM, your temperature, and listen to your heart and lungs and send to your doctor. I also seen something that was pretty unique where you have like a Snow White mirror and not just, you know, Tommy, who's the prettiest of all, but the fact that it has like a quest diagnostic function. Exactly, Janine. So it has like a quest diagnostic function where it'll send all your vitals to, to, to your doctor, which is pretty wild, just by your, your facial uh, recognition. So um, there are gadgets now to in the machine to make your own ice cream and beer, uh, among other things. There's also, I saw GE's coming out with an indoor smoker without the smoke. They just provide the wood chips. So that's also coming as well. Um, what else did I see here? Um, also, uh, AI is going to be in more in cars where you have your AI will drive you and then also guide you in terms of if you get lost or not. Um, I saw a Wi Fi toothbrush that talks to you and tells you how to brush better. That was pretty wild. Um, what else did I see here? Honda and Sony are going to make a new EV car. How, how interesting is that? Volkswagen is going to have chat GPT built into your car. God help you if the AI, AI, AI gets it wrong. John Deere tractors, listen to this, will now have built-in Wi-Fi and you can control your tractor on your phone. Talk about getting some remote, you know, hose there. So anyway, um, Asus is coming out with a laptop that has two screens built in. That's pretty wild. I saw a self-warming baby bottle. I also saw, um, interesting enough, smart toilets and even smart vibrators that are Bluetooth enabled and will and will play music when you want to use them. Um, let's see. <laughs> yes, I kid you not. I kid you not. I saw that at CES. So, <laughs> so uh, speaking of things that are, are are actually pretty hard to believe, is, is it warm in here? Is, is my deodorant working overtime? So anyway, um, 
Honda is coming out with an EV car that could do a crab walk or do a 360 circle for you. Um, I saw AI Fortune Tower there. Um, Copilot, the AI from Microsoft, is coming out for Windows laptops. Um, BMW will now allow you to park your car remotely, even if you're not physically there. Um, Nuance, you know, Dragon Nazi speaking, they're actually coming out with audio glasses that are help people that are hearing impaired uh, to listen better. So hearing aids may become a thing of the past, uh, which is pretty cool. They even have a device. You can stick it to your plant. It will turn the plant and actually have the plant talk to you. And you don't need to be high to figure that one out. So, um, <laughs> yes. So I, I saw that and I thought that's that's pretty cool. I also saw a solar powered gas uh, a generator or, you know, AC generator. So in case you live in a, a hurricane or storm prone area, you could use the sun to sit there and charge that. The last thing I saw, which I'm really looking forward to, is Garmin is coming out with a sport, uh, a heart monitor system. So now I can attach it to my sports bra. So with uh, so with that being said, that's all some of the goodies. If you want to know more about the goodies, I'll drop my information in the chat. It's great seeing everybody on here and happy and healthy 2024 to everybody. Thank you for your one minute tech tip. I really appreciate <laughs> some of the new tech going around. Okay, so we're gonna start uh, with Nancy Fields, and then we're going to go to James Hipkin, then Rich Beyer, and then Mark Mathis. And these are people that have worked with me and have assisted me. We have others that are in the house that will be glad to give you guys some tips as you listen to this recording later. So with Nancy Fields, we're going to go with you first. And can you give us a, a tech tip regarding, you do so much wonderful work with SEO, but is that what you wanted to talk about today or did you have something else in mind? No, I'd love to, and just to let people know that the more I uh, the more I get involved with this uh, wonderful plugin uh, or extension called Keywords Everywhere, the more I'm using it for everything. I'm using it for for blog posts, deciding what to write. I'm using it uh, even for Chat GPT. So if something comes up that's interesting, I I then put a question into Chat GPT. So um, so I love this this keyword research and. It, uh, it, I use it again for everything, for blog posts, for websites, for, you know, just SEO, for figuring out what my customer wants. Wonderful. And thanks so much for that. And if you don't mind putting the information in the chat for that, that would be very helpful. And we'll make sure that we get that out in our newsletter this week, that it's a recommendation that you have. So definitely send us uh, also the, your contact information and we'll take care of that. So, um, um, after Nancy uh, comes, um, I can't remember what I said right now because I don't have my notes in front of me. So we're just going to go with James. <laughs> so James, you are our man of the hour when it comes to websites, website creation. He's got templates for authors and doctors and attorneys. It's amazing what his company does with innately. But the other thing that's most important is uh, James is very big on you have six seconds with which to engage your website visitors. So what kind of tips are you bringing with us today? Well, it's not actually a website tip. It's an email marketing okay. tip. All uh, right, let's talk about it. Raise the profile of the fact that uh, Google and Yahoo and strong rumors indicating that the other major platforms are also moving in this direction are going to be tightening down on their requirement that domains be authenticated. Um, or they're going to get swept into spam. Um, authenticating your domain is very easy to do, um, and it absolutely is a good idea. The one caveat that I'll put out there, this is not something to get panicked over. The, the deadline is February, but the deadline is February for people who have over 5,000 emails a day hitting either Gmail's platform or Yahoo's platform which is probably mo not any of us, but authenticating your domain is still a very good idea. It's an, one of the important ranking factors when it comes to whether or not an email, a marketing email gets flagged as spam. So if anybody wants to know more about that, um, please just ping me and I'll be happy to fill you in. Our staff do this for clients all the time. Okay, if you'd be kind enough to put the contact information in the chat, that way we can save it and we'll send it out with the newsletter that we're gonna be shipping out next week. 
Okay. Next we have Rich Beyer. So Rich, good morning. How is it going in New York? It's awesome in New York. It's bright and sunny right now. It was uh it was the first morning in many, many, many that I didn't have to wear gloves and a head thing to play tennis. So that was good. And uh <laughs> You know, what can I tell you? It's uh, it's it's just I'm. It, first of all, I just finished. I completed uh, reset it yesterday with Mark. So I just want to say that that was a that was a big thing. That was a thing, and it's still kind of washing over me. That all said, let me get into all the good stuff. Um, and I also had a great conversation with Jeff yesterday. So anytime I get to hang out with Jeff is just like you know just joyful. Um, so I'm the branding guy. I'm I'm the one that helps keep you separate from the from everybody else that does what you do, and that's the short version of it. Um, and what I'm going to talk about today is um, some 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 branding history, and then some of the impacts of the, that that's had. So, did you know that on this date in history was the birth uh, birth of Jeff Bezos for, of Amazon fame? Now. Whether you like him or not, whether you agree with him or not, he has certainly done something, done things to change the world. So, you know, his brand, Amazon, A to Z, not bad. Um, do you guys, who's the, anyone know the oldest soda brand? Do, do, do. I want, to, I want to guess that it's Coca-Cola only because they they don't even have their recipe copyrighted or anything like that. Dr. Pepper. Oh, it is Dr. Dr. Pepper. Pepper? That it was is Dr. Second Pepper. Guess. On this no. date in 1885, Dr. Pepper, it was first sold. It was the first soda so sold. And so talk about, you know, establishing a brand, something that never existed before. Dr. Pepper. Um, now I saved for last on this date in 1966 was the premiere of the TV series, Batman. <laughs> now, why do I save this for last? Because there's an enormous amount of, of, of branding and, 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 and pop culture influence that the series had series. Uh, this is not and, and no joke. The Batman series was the first to introduce irony in media. So before that, everything was pretty standard. It was a standard formula. They did a lot of tongue-in-cheek stuff that actually set the stage for any, things like that to come. They hadn't been done before. They also wove a lot of social and political commentary lightly, but they wove that through the series, and they stressed things like education. Um, they stressed things like civil rights, um, all in a kind of a comic book storytelling way. So they were very, uh, very forward in a lot of the things they did. Um, pop culture, they were very campy, bright colors, bam, pow, this and that and everything else. And um, that was, uh, uh, again, not done before. And they were the pioneer of celebrity cameos. Because if you think about it, think about all the cameos, all the people that popped in on that show. And that had not been done before. And um, as a result, that's become a popular trope, if you will, in television. So there you have it, folks, the significance of the branding significance of Batman. And of course, you can't say Batman and bring up 1966 without immediately hearing. Nah, 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 nah. I mean, you can say that everywhere and people know exactly what you're talking about, because I don't nah, know about nah. else. <laughs> exactly. And I used to get on my three wheeler and I had a cape that my mom had made and I would tear down my driveway doing that thing. And I was going a million miles an hour and I was the hottest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> so I know I wasn't the only kid that was doing that kind of thing. Thank you so much, Rich. We appreciate it. And then we're going to move right on along to our dear man, uh, Mark Mathis from the Great White North as well. The thing, the thing for, for me is that whatever struggles that you are going through, whatever, whatever things that you think about, and you know, you have 50 to 60,000 thoughts per day. And these thoughts are controlling your life. And these thoughts are based on your programming, your conditionings and your beliefs. Now, what happens is that we, we think that we, we, you know, these are our things and we try to, we try to find a way to get rid of things, but we cannot work on things that do not belong to us to work on. 
And that's where we come in as uh, with the reset it is to reset the things that don't belong to you. So just this week, just, just on a, pa a piece of paper and just ask yourself the question, what does not belong to me? And you'll see a lot of things that don't belong to you. So that's my tip today. It's just to write down the things that don't belong to you. You know, I'd also love to comment last week, uh, the discussion in which Jean and Janine and, and Mark were speaking about, um, you know, people giving advice and and being very, in a way, forceful for it. And then Mark, I have thought about it all week when he said, if someone tells you you have to do something, is it really that you have to listen to what they're saying or it's really what they're saying about themselves? And that has just been so impactful for me. So thank you. My pleasure. Yeah, we do. We get transferred a lot of programs that connect with other people. Awesome. Um, now uh, I'm left unattended to my own devices. So I think my tip, um, I get to pick which area it's going to come from, um, but I'm going to piggyback on all of all of uh, what I've heard so far. And um, my tip is actually going to sound a little strange, but bear with me. Uh, my tip is to use a Venn diagram to figure yourself out. Um, I'm a big fan of the power of three. And this is what I've been in the last month really, really honing in on is what is the one audience I want to serve and what are the three things I want to do for them? And um, Mark, I've got a few people I'm sending your way. Um, I was trying to work on a book project with somebody and they literally said, here's the thousand things I do. You figure out what the book is. And I said it back and said, no. <laughs> so, um, what I'm doing, and uh, you know, I think I'm going to make the world a little less comfortable for others, um, and not in a mean way. Um, I'm just putting it back to people, saying, "When you figure out who you are, come back to me," um, because one of the things I realized is, yes, I can write a book um, if you don't know who you are. But the real question is, does anybody want to read it? And if you don't, so whether it's a networking tip, whether it's tech tip, whether it's a business tip. Um, I'm a big fan of the Venn diagram. I like to draw three circles and I'm going to be focusing on the center of the circle and anything outside of my little center, I'm going to be sending off to my friends, especially in this group. So um, clarity is huge. So thank you again to Mark. And of course, Rich and I had a great branding conversation yesterday so um, stay tuned for a new and improved venn diagram if you're not um into that on your own there is a japanese exercise i think it's called akagi i'll put it in there um, they actually have four circles um and it helps you clarify what you what you love who you serve and what you do i'll i'll paste the link in the chat The, the, was, other, the other way to really help distill the thousand things you're doing is to get out of your own head. This is from Mark. And get out there and put yourself in the minds of your best customers. You may do a thousand things, but what really matters to your best customers? Yeah. And that's what will really <clears throat> help create a filter that will sort through the stuff that really matters versus the stuff that's just on the table. Awesome. And uh, spoiler alert, James is working on a book and um, James, you and I are going to have more conversations next week. Um, it's, it's been a fun project. I want to add that James has absolutely the best email for, for potential beta readers. And I just about, spit out my coffee when he mentioned uh, if you don't do this for me you're dead to me uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I immediately signed up because I figured it, it would be bad if I was dead to him if I was helping him write the book um, all right so let's talk about it, a ghostwriter <laughs> <laughs> would that make me more effective huh, okay <laughs> um, so the, the pun wasn't the... lost on me Mark it's okay <laughs> Ah, the, the joys. Um, Eileen, would you like to give a tip? Um, I'll 
I'll give a tip that I've learned over the many, many, many years, which is what I'm here actually, is that make sure you're surrounding yourself with the right people. That has been a, that has been the biggest one for me. And uh, so I'm really concentrating on always surrounding myself with the right people, which is exactly why I've joined this group. And, uh, and that includes surrounding yourself with the right people in your personal life minimizing the time with people who don't support you or who, you know, years ago when I started this business, I have an accounting business, I'm in Canada. <laughs> um, so when I started it, you know, there are people who were like saying, oh, no, it'll never work. What are you doing working on your own? And of course, I minimized my time with those people somehow. I didn't even know what I was doing. And here I am now with eight employees in a very successful business and for 13 years. Um, so surrounding myself with the right employees, choosing the right clients, um, making sure that if you have someone who is not the right client that you let them go. Uh, people think they shouldn't do that. Yes, you should, 100%. And making room for the right people to come into your life. So that, that's my tip. Awesome. Well, uh, we're in Canada, so we deal with the Canada Revenue Agency. We do audits, bookkeeping for a number of clients. I write books for people going through divorce, going through really tough divorces, advising them how to prepare for it. And um, geez, what else do I do, Jeff? <laughs> yes, Jeff, what I do. Uh, <laughs> wellness magazine, which I go, I do a wellness magazine with Jeff and I do a lot of public speaking, um, a lot of workshops, live events, conferences. Okay. That kind of stuff. Is it, is it a CPA that you're in the accounting part? No, no, I own my own accounting company and okay. uh, no, I just, I'm a business owner. Okay. And you're located where? Uh, in Oshawa, outside of Toronto. My office is in Oshawa, but we have clients from New Brunswick out to Alberta. Okay. Everything's no online, right? It's easy. So can you put your info in the chat? I, like I, will. Have a conversation I will do that. Awesome. All right. So uh, Janine and I are going to be focusing on podcasting. Um, we'll, we'll talk about podcasting profitability, mm -hmm. um, podcaster playgrounds going to be fun. Um, we've got 25 and counting ways to monetize a podcast. So we're going to be getting, uh, speakers on that now mm -hmm. podcasting. I'm going to put Mr. Sean Bolin on the spot. Um, Sean, would you like to give a tip on anything related to podcasting that you get super nerdy excited about? Ooh, podcasting. Um, <laughs> wasn't quite expecting that. I do have a tip in general, which I believe can also be applied to podcasting. This is one I've been using a lot the past couple of weeks, uh, especially over the holiday season was giving myself a lot of grace. It's not the first time that this particular little bit of information has been brought up in this setting, but I have found it so important because I'm uh, daylight as at a grocery store. I'm a cashier right now to help pay through school. And there have been so many stressed out people coming through my line and as to kind of uh, go off what uh, Miss McInnes said earlier, uh, I try to surround myself with the right kind of people. But when you're yeah. in that kind of setting, you get all sorts of folk coming through your line. So I was always like, just realizing that sometimes if somebody else is having a bad day, it's not your fault. It's not mm -hmm. your problem. You do your best just to be friendly, help them out if you can. But like, just recognize that just because they're feeling bad doesn't mean it was your fault or has anything to do with you. So just give yourself a bit of grace. It's a new year, new thing whole bunch of stuff's going on. Colorado's about to hit sub-zero temperatures. So take it easy on yourself. Awesome. Well, I'm going to share a fun fact since uh, Colorado's about to hit zero. Um, <laughs> most Americans don't know this, but minus 40 is where Fahrenheit and Celsius cross. Mm -hmm. And at some point, somebody says, what is that Fahrenheit or Celsius? My answer is, who cares? It's cold. Um <laughs> My wife asked me last night, there's a little fun science tip. If you've got kids in your life at about minus 30, you can take a pot of boiling water, throw it in the air and it literally vaporizes and it falls and it looks like snow. And uh, my wife wanted me to do that last night. And I'm like, no, it's cold. <laughs> if the boiling water's freezing, guess what Jeff's doing? Um, I, I've recorded one too many of those videos, as you can tell, but um it is fascinating to watch because it just it's like this cloud of vapor. So um, if I get enough requests, I'll, I'll put on my jacket and go outside and do that later today. But um, 
Yeah, just so you know, minus 40 is minus 40, and who cares? Yeah, another fat, fun fact, at minus 40, um, bare skin freezes almost oh. instantly. There you go. But what about Kelvin? <laughs> what about the Kelvin scale? Yeah, what <laughs> It's minus cold. That's yeah. that's how Kelvin works. <laughs> um, now, interesting fun fact. I, I'm looking, and there's more Canadians on today's call than there are Americans. Now, James, w he gets the double count, but, um, <laughs> you know. All right. Let's each take a couple of minutes, and I'll let somebody volunteer. I'm not going to start uh, or voluntold anyone, but what's something – this wonderful brain trust group could support you with. Yes, Shailene. <clears throat> um, I'm looking for uh, a bit of support in with with AI, with Chat GPT and AI, with how to ask the question in a specific enough way. Or do you have any any sites that I can go to to learn how to ask the question in a way that I'm getting the answer that I'm looking for. Does that help? If that I'll makes any sense. Give you a, a tip. There is an actual field of study now. There are people with paid jobs. They're called prompts engineers. Okay. And um, the problem is it's really hard to tell a good one from a bad one. But um, the beautiful thing is AI can be your prompt engineer. Okay. So specifically, and, and I'll give this as an example. Um, the, the thing about AI is you ask a stupid question, you're going to get a stupid response. And <laughs> I hate to say it, but AI just amplifies the quality of the questions. So um, I'll find the link, but there's one guy who teaches prompt engineers how to be prompt engineers. Um, I feel like that's going to be the biggest business in AI is teaching people how to talk to it. Um, but basically what I do is, and, and this is best practice for working with an employee, um, treat AI as if it's one of your humans. And the other weird tip I'm going to give you is that AI likes to role play. So I always start with you're playing the role of blank. So in this case, I would say you're playing the role of prompting engineer. I would like your help to creating the optimum prompt to get a result. So then you need to tell it very clearly, what are you looking for specifically? So for example, if you're looking for a process on how to publish a podcast, you want to make it very clear. Now, like a human being, AI loves an example. So if you, let's say you're writing a blog post and you wrote one last year and everybody loved it, you would say, I'm looking for your help. I want to create a prompt to create a blog post. Here is an example. And the key is you put your example in quotes. And then you say, as a prompting engineer, could you help me design the prompt to get the optimum result? And spoiler alert, if you've got nothing but time like Jeff apparently has, um, I've got an entire conversation about being a prompting engineer. Um, so I ask it how I can create optimum prompts to work with GPT. And it is a beautiful thing. I wish all humans could communicate as well as AI. It will tell you exactly what it wants you to tell it. And it'll lay it out so... You could just say, as a prompting engineer, um, what is a perfect prompt to get you to help me create a prompt? And that, sorry, Mark, go ahead. No, that's neat. No, I was just commenting with it. That's neat to that AI can you can work with AI to ask me AI to do what you need to do. So it's just beautiful. Yeah, it's like having a deeply distracted expert at your command. And if you don't ask it in the right way, it just gives you the, yeah, yeah, I'm watching TV answer. Um, my wife does that to me sometimes. She'll answer without looking. And I'm like, I know you didn't just pay attention to that question because you know, I asked you where my socks are and you pointed to the fridge. Um, AI does that sometimes. So you need to stop and say, I'm sorry, AI, are you paying attention? Um, but the other thing, Mark, I'm, I'm using a lot of um, code language, and I, I've created what I call my source code. Um, one of my source codes is my 
my engineering prompt conversation. So I'll just say, refer to source code. Let's talk about engineering prompts. And it only looks at the stuff I've given it. So for anybody who's really nerdly interested in GPT, um, I'm actually, I've got 90 minutes blocked off today and um, Rich has graciously agreed to be my, my beta subject. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is recording a training on how you can use GPT to take stuff you've got and turn it into more rich content. If you put in bad commands, you're going to get bad outputs. And what I always do, and if you notice GPT, what I love is you tell it to do something and it'll respond and say, here's what I hear you're telling me to do. And that's how humans should communicate. We don't. We just, you know, um, Rich and I yesterday, we were talking about a mastermind and Rich and I, we have a great relationship. Rich just looks at me and says, Jeff, what do you mean by the word mastermind? And too many people just go, oh, I know what a mastermind is. Well, I don't like it, so I'm not going to go. But when you say, what does it mean to you? It, it really helps with clarity. So that's, does that help, Shailene? Or did we lose Shailene? She's vanished from my screen. And the, well, the other thing, if I can add in on this, is that when you get results, when you get the results from ChatGPT, that's when you can realize, that's when you get how to refine the the, the question, the prompt, you know? And I, I, I've said this is great. Now can you revise this list to, 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 to and pare it down, pare it down, pare it down, you know? And, uh, Again, the, the the more specific. You blew my mind yesterday, Jeff, with some of the stuff that that you showed <laughs> me. By the way, all right, I love it. This guy is like, first of all, he's out of his mind. So just just know that. <laughs> um, and 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 the level, the level at which you were showing me stuff was it was it was it was transformative. I love yeah. it. Oh. Does that help, Shailene? And, you know, I could mention that as I'm designing websites for people, one of the biggest things is their content and it can hold things up forever. And so by using chat GPT and running it and, uh, uh, and there, after doing some keyword research and figuring out what it is they want to say, putting something in chat GPT and then putting it up for them, at least the site gets up. And then it really motivates my customers to then put in their own language. But in order to get a site up, it's a really great way, especially because I spend a lot of time putting in the, the infrastructure because that to me is the most important thing. I'm looking, I'm th trying to think like a robot when I put in the infrastructure to have the robots come to the site. And it, it does take a few weeks for it to even get attention from the robots anyway. But when you have um, generic content on it, it's okay. And it really gets them started and it gets things, uh, gets things uh, ranking. And building on that, another thing and building on what Jeff said, it's use it as a dialogue. If we're creating a marketing landing page for one of our clients, We'll start by asking ChatGPT to define the persona of the ideal customer for, and then describe the product. And it will come back with a usually a pretty good persona definition. And then you'll say, using this persona, what are the key problems that this customer is trying to solve? And it will come back with a list of problems. And then you'll say, Considering the persona and the thing and understanding that you are an expert copywriter, please provide, you know, five potential headlines for the hero section of this landing page. And it will come back with headlines. And then you'll ask it, okay, so now list the five obstacles that might stop a consumer from moving forward with this. So it's this dialogue that goes on and it comes back with obstacles. And then you ask it to create headlines and body copy for each of the obstacles. And, you know, in 20 minutes, 
you've got a really well-crafted marketing landing page. Now you still have to go in there, add your own voice to it, et cetera. But it's, it's, a, it's not a difficult, I mean, my stay at home, I'm, my stay at home moms who build websites for people do this for clients and they're not marketing people. So even, even though, you know, it's a little generic, it's still better than the client can do themselves. And can I jump in on what James just said for mm -hmm. a quick moment? I love the part when you said about adding your own voice, because if you just take what's, what, what that spits out and, 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 and post that, th there are so many people that are going to just know that that was just exactly. generated. And I think you lose credibility by that, truthfully. Right. So yeah. take it, make it your own. Don't don't be afraid to use it. By God's sake, it's a great place to 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 start from, so that you're not working with a blank canvas. Yeah, read it out loud and and ask yourself, would I say that? Yeah. And if the answer is no, then rewrite it. Mm -hmm. But it but it's so much faster to rewrite something like that than it is to try to come up with it from whole cloth. Yes, uh, Mr. Bolin, I think you had a comment. Yes, I, I saw do. You. So no worries. Uh, when I first saw AI come out, I'm like, this is going to be a fantastic tool. And that's what it is. It's a fantastic starting tool, but please don't make it the end all and be all. You still got to put that human emotion there because the AI does not do that. Yeah. I, Cause I knew what was going to happen is there's going to be a ton of content going up and it's all going to look the same because everyone's yeah. just going to put something in and then post it. And it's just like, if you want that human element, you're going to have to add it yourself, but it's a fantastic starting point. Gets rid of that blank page syndrome, which has cursed writers for generations. Oh, yeah. That's wonderful. And let's not forget about personal branding, folks. Yeah. You know, if you're putting out generic information, then you become a generic whatever you do. Or a, you know, you live in the land of generica. So, so, you know, anytime you get to write something, anytime you get to put something out there, it's a function of your brand. Right. Would anyone like to learn how to teach GPT to speak like you? Yeah, I, I'm doing that now. How do you do it, Jeff? Okay, I'm going to give you a cheat. Um, so first and foremost, there's a way to create your own custom GPTs. Mm -hmm. I do that. I'm going to do a tutorial on that another day. Um, but basically, James, you've got 30 years of content. Um, put them in Word documents. Yep and upload it and say it, it especially something you're passionate about like um your your relationship marketing and just put it in quotes and say here is mm -hmm. a transcript of some content i've created could you identify the tone voice like how would you describe yep. my that's, writing that's style exactly how i'm doing it yeah. I, i'll take three or four paragraphs from something i've written and i'll say please analyze the tone and style of this content Yep. So and the thing I'll I'm... go back in and do, okay, now let's take these three paragraphs and analyze it. And I might do that three times. And usually after three times in the session, I have um, trained it to write like I write. Yep. And if you really, really, really want to propel yourself, um, when I've written a book, I upload the entire book and I ask GPT to call the book my source code and it'll pull out my thoughts, my words, my key actions, um, and it'll speak in my voice. Now, I'm going to share this for Mark's benefit. Um, I've realized that um, language attracts the kind of people that your language, you know, your your. You know, they say you become who you surround yourself with. Your language also becomes that. Um, so one of the things I do, Mark, is I say, pretend I'm an enlightened soul who lives in abundance and I want to work with optimists only. How would you re rewrite this text? And I still, I want it to resonate my language because it's got to sound like me. Um, but there are certain word choices that actively repel broken people who want you to fix them. And um, so right now I'm doing a filter on all of my past books and I'm getting GPT to rewrite them all from the perspective of an optimist. And I'm going to tell you this, Mark, I am pissing people off. <laughs> there are like, it, it is funny. Like there's programs and conditioning out there. Um, I actually wrote a post about being an optimist 
And somebody reached out to me and told me more or less, I won't say their exact words because I don't want Sean to have to edit it. Um, but they told me where I could go, how I could get there and how rude I was for excluding them. And I reread the post and I'm like, that nowhere does it say pessimist drop dead. It just said, optimists, let's talk. And this person felt so displaced by my choice of words. Mm -hmm. And I just smiled and said, thank you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of the fundamental principles of marketing is it's as important to repel as it is to attract. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and that's that's a, the whole business about firing clients. Um, if they're not the right people for you, get them out of your life. Yep. And, and fun fact, I'm working on a filter with GPT where it will take people's posts, writing, email, whatever it is, and identify them as more or less positive or negative. And for those who ring as negative, um, I'm just saying thanks, but no thanks. And, you know, yesterday I had this project. Somebody came to me and quoted and said, you know, I gave them a quote on what the project was going to be for a book. They countered with half the price and three books. And I said, could you explain to me why I would take that deal? <laughs> she was really offended when I said, no, thank you. Um, but, you know, knowing your worth, knowing who you need to repel, um, you know, so I'm having a lot of fun seeing the updated books because um, just the word help, when you put that word out there, it attracts people who want to be no. helped. Well, yeah. They want help, but they don't want to be helped yeah. and they don't want to help themselves and they, and don't, they don't want, want to, be to pay for the help. Yeah. Can no. I, can I pick your brain for free? Yes, Sean. I mean, Mr. Bolin. I'm looking, I'm looking for volunteers to be beta readers on the oh, book yes. that Jeff and I are working on. If anybody yeah. wants to be a beta reader, um, go, I'll put the link in the, in the, um, in the chat here, but go and sign up and we'll, get you into the queue. And that would be awesome if you could do that. Yeah, I received your email as well, uh, James. So I'll take a look at it. Okay. I was like, oh my God, I don't want to be dead to James. I got to get on board here. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, I'm writing the book. He's not hey, going to. Hey, you know, it. Th that's a funny, because I put that in there deliberately. And it, it's part of, if people don't have a sense of humor and haven't got, don't get me to the point where, they understand where I'm coming from. I probably don't want them to be involved in this project. Yeah. So, and anybody who knows me knows where I'm coming from on, on a, on a sentence like that. So hmm. it, it, it's just one of those things. <clears throat> Let me get the link for you all. It's already in there, my friend. Oh, it is. Okay. There you go. And just from a amusement point of view, check it out because uh, it's it's just fun. And by the way, the book is going to be fun. James and I worked really hard to put fun into it and, mm -hmm. you know, trying to teach a very serious topic like um, website and business marketing and make it fun. Um, spoiler alert, there's a wedding in the book. I put that in there just to really make people feel all joy. I'm um, still lobbying for the hot blonde in the in the convertible, but he hasn't he hasn't he hasn't caved yet. But I'll get him there. <laughs> I haven't said no. I just I'm trying to figure out where it goes. But here's the beautiful thing: um, I can run James's script, our book manuscript, through GPT and say where would be the appropriate place to put the hot blonde in the sports car. <laughs> and it'll say what about here um so that's the thing i mean gpt in my humble opinion is a the world's greatest toy you know i words are my i've grown up around words i love words they're my 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 world and <laughs> It's amazing because you can play with it and, and have some fun with it. And if you're sitting at your computer too serious, and I'm going to say you're probably stuck in your programs and conditionings about what writing is. Um, so if you're at your keyboard going blank screen, um, have a chat with Mark. I promise he will help you see that blank screen as a canvas, not as a torture chamber. Um, and, yeah. and 
for everybody's benefit, um, Rich and I were working on a mastermind and uh, Janine's seen the video. So I'm going to just share that all of the people in this community, um, I want to bring you in as guests and put you in front of my my other clients, because I'm going to be honest, Mark, they're way more interesting after you've helped them reset. Um, you know, I have one individual who wants me to help him for free and I know he's got a great message and I know he's got so much potential, but he's also got about 2 billion lines of faulty code that um, he needs to get rid of. Mm -hmm. And honestly, if he's not willing to fix the source problem, um, I'm not willing to work on, on the symptoms, which is he, he thinks he needs more clients, but what he really needs is to believe in himself. And, and I think it all, it all starts with the, the, who you are in this moment. That's all it is. And if you don't know who you are, why should we buy from you? Yeah. Simple as that. Yes, Sean. I know oh, do you have your mute card there, Jeff? You want to hit me up with it? <laughs> I was trying. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have one last question here for the final three minutes, which was from Nancy Fields here in the chat. Uh, which is uh, where to begin with talking about websites and making them fun. I've been told that I am too serious. I'll let you take it away. Awesome. So do you wanna play with AI on that, Nancy? Sure. Here's the thing. You are an expert, and when you speak, I think people believe that. What they want is the person, not the textbook. That's it. So, you know, think about like when I get really stuck in being uptight, um, I think about whatever I'm working on, like Lego. And I start to think about what are the pieces I need to build the Lego thing. Um, and that's for me, that's fun because I've spent years watching my boys play with Lego. Um, but how does Nancy play? And, and if I may have a chat with Mark, um, you know, the, the seriousness is part of programs and conditioning. Um, and I'm going to overanalyze this. I'll let Mark provide the official diagnosis. But when we're too serious, it's because we're afraid they're not going to like us for who we are. So we put up this little shield and that in a way repels people. How'd I do, Mark, for my Very amateur? good, very good. You, you learn it like a, like a pro, man, like a pro. Yeah, it's about the it's about really the the programs and conditions that you went through through your life. You, you you there's a lot of people that put a lot of stuff on top of you, meaning these are the programs and conditions that don't belong to you. So to to reset the things that don't belong to, you so that you can be free to be who you are. And once you're free, you can do your stuff that you need to do, and people will follow you because of who you are and it's really that simple it's nothing really complicated and it doesn't it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg and it's just two sessions long it's 290 minutes and that's all you need to reset the things that don't belong to you yeah and i'm gonna just say for those who watch us um through youtube um you probably have some programs and conditioning that says you shouldn't be here or you can't be here or i'm too shy to be here um, I would strongly encourage you to just try it once. Um, I promise we are exactly as you see us. We're not performing roles or characters. Um, but truly, until you step out and say, hey, here's who I am, nobody's going to be able to help you the way you want to be helped or guide you the way you need to be guided. So, you know, for those who love Janine like we do, come on in. We're, we're nice people, I promise. <laughs> we won't bite.